The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord. The apostles say to the Lord, Increase our faith. The Lord replied, If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this small berry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you will say to your servant, who has just come in from plowing or turning sheep in the field, come here immediately and take a place at the table? Would he not rather say to him, prepare something for me to eat? Put on your apron and wait on me while I eat and drink. You may eat and drink when I am finished. Is he grateful to that servant because he did what was commanded? So should he be with you. When you have done all you have been commanded, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done what we are obliged to do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Habakkuk is one of the minor prophets. He lived 20 or 30 years before what's known as the Babylonian exile in 587 BC. Last week we heard from Amos, who was talking about, hey, you guys are living in luxury. What gives, you know, when you're not even broken hard over the fall of Joseph? In other words, the northern, the southern tribes were suffering a lot from people coming in and beating them up. And the northern tribes were saying, not my problem. And so Amos was crying out. Now Habakkuk is doing the same thing, saying, guys, why aren't you coming to the aid of others? And then God says to Habakkuk, hey, I write this vision down. In the next chapter, the vision says, there'll come a time when my people will know the truth in their hearts. And my friends, that's been fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Paul is telling Timothy, hands were laid on you. When you were confirmed, hands were laid on you. The bishop anointed you with oil, and he sealed you with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. There was an eighth grade teacher over at Holy Family, Mrs. Peace, who helped me finally remember those seven gifts. You think of the acronym WORK CREW, spelled with a U, it helps, understand, it helps us remember. Wisdom understanding, right judgment, or also counsel. And then also you have um, K is knowledge. And then C is courage, also known as fortitude. And then the RE is reverence, also sometimes known as piety. And then also, finally, it's wonder and awe, or known as the fear of the Lord. Now, the fear of the Lord is not this thing where we're in, we have trepidation from God. It's not like we're in terror. No, it, it's like this. If you really love someone, I mean, you really care about that person, you're afraid that you'll do something that could make them mad or upset or hurt them, right? That's the kind of fear that God wants us to have towards Him because what does upset God? God is upset by sin, right? Why is God upset by sin? Because sin is stupid. <laughs> sin hurts us. If we follow God, our life will be much, much better. But that rascally devil tricks us into thinking that somehow sin is going to help us. And it's not. It harms us in untold ways. And so the whole idea is that in that beginning prayer, the collect, did, we, did you catch that? Kind of had something that sounded a little strange. It said, God's mercy goes beyond and is so powerful for even those things that conscience dreads to, to reflect upon. In other words, I suspect most of us have done something in our life and we say, why did I do that? That was stupid. I can't believe I did that. And you're almost ashamed to think about how you failed. But that first opening prayer says, don't worry about it. God has this covered. God's mercy is perfect, total, and complete. And if we understand that, it's all good. And God has written into our hearts what we know is true, good, and beautiful. 
And then Jesus in the Gospel, he's saying, look, if you do what I command you, it's not like pat yourself on the back or anything. That's just what you're supposed to do. But here's the thing. If you do what you're supposed to do, it has its own rewards. Virtue has its own rewards. Why is it, they say, people who are religious, who live the supernatural life, and you compare the people who take religion seriously, live a devout life with those people who are agnostic, atheistic, and have no, no faith roots. Why is it on average that, that the people who take religion seriously are twice as happy? They're twice as happy. Because it doesn't rely on what we need. We know that God has us. He will help us. Don't be discouraged, my friends. Let us pray that we strive to live a life of holiness, a life of sanctity. We're engaged in a spiritual battle right now. The devil has made tremendous inroads. And if you're in a battle, do you know what the first things you do when the day, the day one of the war, first thing you do is you cut the supply lines. The devil has done that. He's gotten most people not to come to Mass. He's gotten most people not to believe in God. And they cut off the grace. By coming to Mass, your grace is poured into you. When you pray the rosary, Grace is poured into you. When you do some act of kindness or act of love and you're serving other people, grace is poured into you. But when you become so selfish and so self-consumed, you're cutting yourself off from those supply lines. Okay, so you cut the supply lines. Then what do you do? You divide. You divide and conquer. Look at how divided our world is today. We need to do our part to not contribute to that division. We need to take our moorings from Christ, from what the church truly teaches and has taught throughout the ages. And by doing that, then we can be an agent of peace. We can heal maybe some of the divisions that exist in our world. If somebody has some kind of outrageous opinion, ask them to say, why do you believe that? Why do you think that's a good idea? And genuinely listen to their answer. Don't be trying to calculate how you're going to respond. Don't worry about it. If they ask for your opinion, then calculate how you're going to respond. But if they don't ask for your opinion, don't waste your breath. Just say, let's pray for one another. Because if they don't ask for your opinion, they probably don't want to hear it. And they're probably not open to it. So that psalmist, right? Harden not your hearts. May our hearts not be hardened. May we be open to God's grace. And may we, able, may we be able to see as God would have us see. And be those agents of peace. And be those people that will draw others closer to Christ. Let us try and get others to reestablish those supply lines. Let us turn towards God. Get them back to church. So that we can you know, be filled with that grace that God longs to give us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us stand as we profess our faith in the only God who can save. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who is the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we bring our first intercession before the Lord.
for the church, that she may be a light to the nations and a guide to all peoples, and that she may be a beacon of hope in these difficult times. We pray to the Lord. For all nations throughout the world, that they may never be motivated by greed or self-interest, but rather work for all that is true, good, and beautiful. We pray to the Lord. For the repose of the soul of Joseph Tomkiewicz, Jr., for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. For all the health care workers, police officers, and first responders who take the risk to protect our society, that God protect them and console them in all they do and endure. We pray to the Lord. That our faith may be strong, true, and rooted in the gospel. We pray to the Lord. That God through the intercession of our Blessed Mother, supernaturally intervene and heal our nation and our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord For all those who have died, those that have been forgotten, and those who have no one to pray on their behalf, we pray to the Lord. Lord That all corruption in our world be uncovered, both in the church and outside her ranks, and those responsible for it lose their power or be converted so that we can have leaders who respect life, religious liberty, and all that is in accord with natural law. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, we also remember all those people who have suffered from the hurricane and its aftermath that God meet their needs and that we might do what we can to help them through prayer and whatever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of the people gathered here before you, those spoken and those kept in the silence of our hearts. Answer them insofar as they meet our deepest needs and are in accord with your holy and divine will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 717. Thank you. 